Hello my foodie friends and welcome to my kitchen. Today we're going to review the Fannie Farmer Cookbook originally published in 1896. I have the 100 year anniversary edition but they kept all the recipes original so we're going to be able to see the recipes as they did. When they first published this book, the publishers did not think this was going to be popular and therefore only made a very limited run of about 3,000 copies. However, it soon sold out and became a bestseller and has been in print ever since. Fanny Farmer wanted a very different kind of cookbook. Not only did she explain the chemistry behind why and how we cook, but she also helped to standardize the ingredients all across the United States. So anyone would be able to pick this cookbook up and see exactly what she was talking about when she used measurements. Whereas before, recipes was more of a guessing game of what the original author intended. I decided to pick an unusual recipe out of this book this time. I've seen stuffed cucumbers in other historic cookbooks before. And I've also seen where they actually cook the cucumber and I've always been very curious as to what that would taste like because I don't believe we really do that much anymore and I've never seen that in a modern cookbook. So here's our recipe for the stuffed cucumbers and you can see we're going to use something called force meat. So we have to turn over here and you can see this right here, chicken force meat one is the recipe we're going to be using for that. It also says to pour a bechamel sauce over the cucumbers once you get them cooked and done. I went ahead and made this sauce last night and I have it ready to go. This white stock is usually referring to chicken stock. I had some homemade turkey stock so I went ahead and used that instead. But by all means if you've got chicken stock on hand just use that. To get our cucumbers ready, first we're going to peel the cucumbers, then cut the ends off, and finally scoop the seeds out with our spoon. meat. Originally you would take raw chicken and you would put it into a sieve and then strain it with a pestle until you got something maybe akin to almost pink slime of what we use for chicken nuggets today. However, I'm going to cheat a little bit and use a modern convenience and chop the chicken. Well actually really puree it in this. This recipe calls for one egg white. I'm going to use my egg separator that I picked up at a state park in Virginia. All you do, crack your egg, give a little bit of a shake, and pour the egg white right out of the beak. And you have your yolk inside ready for something else. So first, we're going to cook our bread and milk into a paste. I'm going to let my husband Mitch do that. And while he's doing that, I'm going to go ahead and puree my chicken. After that, we're actually going to add our butter, our egg, and our seasonings to the cooked bread and milk mixture, and then add our chicken.
we have our bread mixture all ready and all we have to do is add it to our pureed chicken and it'll be ready to stuff in our cucumbers. Now for the strange part. I had my cucumbers soaking in cold water and now I'm going to just stuff the insides with the force meat mixture. And then we'll place each one onto the trivet in our saucepan. So I have my cucumbers all stuffed and ready. I'm going to use the rest of my homemade turkey stock to surround it and then we'll put the lid on and let them cook for 40 minutes. Okay. So it's been 40 minutes. We've got our cucumbers done, and I also reheated my bechamel sauce from, that I made last night. It says to serve the cucumbers over dry toast. So I'm going to cut some slices from my homemade sourdough bread that I made yesterday also. And I'll let Mitch fry this in a little bit of butter. We also ended up with some leftover chicken force meat. So we're gonna go ahead and fry that into chicken patties and have that for another dinner. Now we have our toasted bread and I put two cucumbers on top with the force meat and then on top of that we have our gravy. Okay, before we try this, I just wanna say I'm kind of excited because, like I said, I'd always wanted to try this recipe since we just don't cook cucumbers anymore. I've never seen that in a modern cookbook. That's and tough. no, and I've always wondered what would a cooked cucumber um, taste like along with forced meat which was extremely popular during the 1800s and early 1900s, but then kind of fell out of favor, except for very traditional forms of meatloaf and meatballs. But on the other hand, I'm really nervous because this is really outside of our comfort zone. Very weird food. Yeah, in terms of what we normally eat. So, I don't know. Here it goes. <laughs> okay, let's do it. Make sure you get a little bit of everything. Force me fell out. Alright. I got mine. <laughs> I'm having trouble. Alright, All right. I got this. Okay, ready? Ready? And go. You know what? That's I'm, really good. I'm really surprised again. Yeah. I really, really am. Good. This is kind of like the, the spinach and tomato sauce that we did last yeah. week. It's a little bit of everything. Where we're, yeah. It goes it, together really well. It seemed like an odd thing to put together and an odd way of making it, but this is really good. Not something you can do if you only got a few minutes to make a dinner. Yeah, I mean, it took probably, i say this probably took at least a good hour, if not longer, of um, just cook time. Um, and even with the prep time, it might have actually been a little bit longer, like maybe an hour and a half. I actually shaved a little time today just by making the bechamel sauce last night. So if Although we would have- you could have done that. You could have done that yeah, while Yeah, we could have done that while the, yeah, that's true. This, you know, could have been done. So we probably could have condensed that a little bit more. But, um, I, I am. I'm really, it's really surprised. Good, though. It's definitely worth the time. It is. The gravy, I think, is actually what makes it with you. You have a lot of different textures going on, and they all somehow work together mm -hmm. really well. And this in the cookbook, it actually says you can serve this as an entree, which is what I'm kind of doing right now, or you can serve it as a vegetable, and that would, you know, count towards um, a side dish. So, yeah, I would actually make this again. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, it is totally outside of our comfort zone. Like I said, I've never made anything like this really before. I don't cook cucumbers. 
but the cooked cucumber works. I like it. I, I do too. So kudos to Fanny Farmer. Oh yeah. Yeah. And uh, another really interesting side note is she actually used to lecture at Harvard uh, to doctors and nurses on good nutrition and what they needed to do for their patients. So and she worked tirelessly yeah, at she, that for the for her entire life. Up to I think her last lecture was only ten days before she died. Yeah, so, so. she she really um really was a pioneer in actually in, in good nutrition, but also in the kinds of cookbooks that we get because every cookbook that we've ever bought since then has followed this format with, For the most part, with yeah. standardized yeah. Uh, uh, measurements and then a very well written out uh, instructions underneath on exactly what you need to do. She also uh, uh, included uh, a portion on how to build your fire in your cooking range, how to stoke it, how to clean the stove, how to keep your um, stove at a consistent temperature for certain kinds of cooking, especially baking, because that, that was kind of, um, that was a science in itself to bake in a wood stove. So, you know, so what, what would we give this? Yeah, I would say, excellent. yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I hate to give it five out of five. It's a little hard. Just because, not... yes, yeah, some of the recipes are maybe a little bit more involved than what maybe, you know, a, a typical American would have time to do. And I don't know if you would be able to get children on board with something like this. I, if you introduced it early, that's they, true. They maybe. knew that it was good. <laughs> That's true. Before I mean, they decided that vegetables were achy, then you might yeah. get them to like vegetables. And doesn't well. gravy make everything better? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, maybe you wouldn't have any problems at all with, you know, this amount of gravy on it. It makes everything good. Yeah, yeah. it's really good. Um, I guess the only thing would be is maybe the time factor. Yeah. You know, this might be like a, a weekend dish Special that you make. Dinner yeah, or maybe not something you do during the weekday. Yeah. So, this yeah. This would be one of my favorites as a kid, I think. Really? If my mom ever cooked, this would have been one of my favorites as a kid. Wow. Okay, I can't say that. I think as a kid, well, I probably would have ran away from the table. Your mom cooked. If, yeah, my mom was an excellent cook. <laughs> Wonderful cook. So was my grandmother. But I still think as a kid, I would have ran away from this. I don't know. I, don't know. I, I was I a I, don't know. I was a picky kid. Not now, but you know. <laughs> All right. So yeah, let's dig in and finish this. And if you're interested in this cookbook, it is continuously printed. You can even get it on Walmart.com, eBay, Amazon, uh, Books a Million, Barnes and Noble, all the usual book sites. And actually, you can get it for fairly cheap too. So if you want something unusual and historical. I would turn to Fanny Farmer. Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, excellent. All right, and we're going to go ahead and finish our dinner. So make sure, and if you like this video, click the like button below, and go ahead and subscribe if you wanna see what we're gonna cook up next. Thank you.